Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make concrete countertops. Today we're here to Anthony's house in his kitchen that he's renovating. You saw my entire kitchen renovation and that is done. But today we are here working on his giant kitchen island. He's already built the cabinet carcasses down here and so we're gonna pour a giant piece of concrete on top of it for a countertop. I know very little about this process, but you've done some research, mm -hmm. so what are we doing? Uh, we're pouring a big slab of concrete. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did some research and found a really cool solution that allows us to pour the concrete directly on top of the cabinet carcasses. So instead of having to build a mold and pour it outside and carry this gigantic slab, which would probably hurt people. Probably wouldn't even work. Yeah, it would yeah. probably fall apart on its way in. Um, we put on these edge profiles and we pour a bunch of concrete. Um, and because of this cool profile, it ends up using less concrete overall, which ends up saving a little bit of money. And lastly, this company also offers a white concrete, which I'm super excited about seeing. Yeah white concrete in here. So. That's gonna look really slick. Mm -hmm. This is a very large place to pour. Uh, we have some temporary countertops here we need to <laughs> remove. We need to get some more people in here so we have more hands. And then we can actually start laying down the surface that we're gonna pour on top of. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. This thing is 11 feet long <laughs> and 42 inches deep. So it was a very large piece of concrete if we were to try to put it somewhere else, you know, make it and lift it into place. I don't even know that we could do that. Yeah. So the pouring helps, but we have to pour on top of something. This is open, so what's the plan? Magic. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, uh, we got to put down some cement board, um, and then that gives us a flat surface. So we'll put that down with some silicone. It's that easy. Cool. So I just have to put a few dabs of silicone here to hold it in place. The weight of the concrete basically keeps it from coming off anyway. Uh, we already cut this, used a masonry blade and a circular saw uh, to make some nice accurate cuts. I believe you could score it with a utility knife and break it similar to what you might do with drywall or something. Oh my goodness. This is the first time I'm seeing like the full size of the island right now. This is crazy. <laughs> it's gigantic. This is awesome. Yeah. It's as big as yours, Bob. It's bigger than mine. Is it really? Mine is 10 feet. No, it's not. It is. I did Bob on something. So we've got this surface on here. You've got some black metal supports mm -hmm. for, to support the weight of the thing. But for the pouring process, what are we doing here? Yeah, so uh, they recommend just building some two by four legs just to give it some temporary support. And then you leave it there for two or three days, let it cure, and then you knock it out. So the concrete's fiber reinforced. So it can actually span, like have an overhang of almost 12 inches without even any support. But wow, I did it anyway. It's just over 12. Awesome. Yeah. What's next? Well, we'll need to put those supports in, but next we can start putting the profile on, I think. Cool. Let's talk about the profile. Okay. So this is the edge profile that comes with the system. And it's really cool for a couple of reasons. It's plastic and it gives you a really smooth edge when it's all said and done, but it's also breakaway. So after the concrete cures, you actually snap this part off to reveal the nice clean edge of the countertop. Now this has like an overhang shape mm -hmm. and that is for what? So that is so you have a nice, in this case, inch and a quarter thick edge profile. So it looks like your countertops are an inch and a quarter thick, but really you're only pouring an inch of concrete on this, which helps you save uh, money on how much concrete you're using. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so this lays on this edge. Yep. And then we just screw it into the cement board? Pretty much, it helps to pre-drill some holes in this. So okay. we'll do that and then we'll sink some screws in and almost be ready to pour. Another thing, this is just one of the profiles. They have different styles, different mm -hmm. looks, different heights, all of that stuff, yeah, right? Okay. that's true. Cool, lots of options. Yep. These come in a certain length, and so we needed a longer one, mm -hmm. obviously. So we did a scarf joint here. I'm gonna hold these together, and you're gonna seal it up with... This is tape. Gorilla Tape. Yeah, you can use duct tape, and we'll do the same thing on the corners as well. And then we can also go back with some silicone caulking and caulk all these edges and the seam and all that stuff just to be right. safe. We've got the edging put down, got it taped and screwed into place, made sure it's level and all that stuff. We have to put in some reinforcement in the surface, but before we do that, 
We have to drill holes. Yes, we have to make provisions for these. These are some pop-up outlets we're gonna be installing directly into the countertop. Uh, we're gonna have two. We've made a form with a 3D printed part and a piece of three inch PVC that we're going to put through the hole that we make. And that way we can knock this out when it's done and we can install this and have power in the island. Okay, so what are we using to drill the holes in the hardy board? I have a little hole cutting uh, jig. It's adjustable. It can cut through wood, tile, cement board. It's like seven bucks, it's great. So you can just adjust these little guys and these pointy things, cut the hole as it spins in your drill. I will say, I've used one of these before. Are you nervous? They don't work super well, so we'll see how it turns out. If, if we can get it to score and we can punch the hole out, that's all we yeah, need, yeah. so. Sure. Coming through. Yep. This thing's kind of scary, so I feel like I should probably protect my eyes. Probably. I am just putting some hot glue in while Bob holds it level and then we'll let the glue cool and that should hold that thing perfectly level so when it's done, it'll sit flush with the counter above. So I went home for the day and didn't do any of this work, but there's a lot of work done. So tell me what all this is about. Yeah, so after you left, I put down this fiberglass reinforcing mesh and it's pretty simple. It comes as a part of the system. You just screw down these little plastic clips and then you put the mesh inside the clips. The clips hold it at just the right height so it's suspended in the concrete. And this is kind of their alternative to say putting rebar in concrete, which is a more traditional way to go about it. But with this fiberglass mesh and their concrete mix, which has a fiber additive, it's gonna be super strong. Awesome. So this big giant form is ready to go. You've got all the other sections done, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the actual mixing and pouring process. Okay. On the Concrete Countertop Solutions website, there is a calculator you can use to determine how much concrete you're gonna need for your project. It basically just goes by square footage and the profile that you choose. Uh, we have a lot to do. So we ended up doing a test pour ahead of time uh, just to kind of determine how far a bag of concrete would go. And we discovered about a two foot by two foot square or about a cabinet's width here is a bag, uh, which is great. So this was a very manageable pour for one person to do, but when you're working against curing time with concrete, uh, you're probably gonna need a lot more people or at least a few more hands to do something as big as an 11 foot island. So we're gonna bring in some extra hands and uh, we're gonna start pouring. All right, it's time to pour and like I mentioned, we're gonna need some help. Now that we have our help, uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix up this white concrete. We're gonna add a little bit of color additive to make it a little bit brighter and we're gonna start pouring. You guys ready? <laughs> there we go. This is gonna take a lot of pours to really fill this, so I'm kind of trying to work it into the corners and down through the mesh. Uh, this stuff is supposed to be made really flowy, so it can flow right through this mesh really nicely. So. Um, once we get this kind of in place, we'll probably get a couple more buckets down here and then we'll begin the screeding process, which I'll show you in a bit. Anthony from the future here, and as you can see, we messed up. So we accidentally left Bob's mic on when he was outside mixing concrete. So that's why you can't hear a word that I'm saying right here. So real quick, let me just fill you in on what's going on. I am working on screeding the concrete out with this level because it's long enough to go across the island. And next, I'm gonna begin tapping the edge of the forms with the handle of this trowel, just to release any potential air pockets that might be in there to help us get a cleaner edge. Anyway, that's what's happening. Back to the video. I've started the process of floating, which is the first step in finishing the top of the concrete. This is a Lexan float uh, that Concrete Countertop Solutions sent. Uh, but basically, after about half an hour to an hour, 
uh, once kind of the water on the surface start, starts to evaporate, you want to start floating it. And there's going to be trowel marks and stuff, which is fine. Uh, those will both go away with the second pass of finishing, which we'll get to later. All right, so <laughs> this is a lot. This is a big, big thing to do. But we're almost done with the first finishing pass on this island. Because we did so many different pours, uh, you know, the, the cure time from this end to this end is actually pretty different. So I got to do a little bit more on that end. Then we wait a little while and then we trowel it. So it's been a few hours since we did the initial pour. I am getting really messy, as is the floor. Um, but as you saw earlier, I was using the float, which is this guy. Now I'm now switching to the steel trowel. So the surface, especially down here where we started, is getting really hard and solid, which means we can do the steel trowel. And basically, you just put a lot of pressure, go slow, and just smooth it out until it looks nice. And once all that's done, we're done for the day. This has cured for about 24 hours, which means it's time to demold. Bob's already started over there. He's just kind of breaking the seam a little bit with that putty knife. And really all we have to do is break off the piece of plastic and we'll reveal our edge. So I'm excited to see it. Ooh. Ah. Cool. So there's, there's some bubbles that got trapped, but I kind of like it. It, it gives it a little more character because, I mean, it's concrete and it's supposed to have a little bit of variation. And you can patch them if you want, but I might actually leave them. I'll take the blame for these because I did tamp this side, so <laughs> those are on me. It's always your fault. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have, this, this looks really cool in here, but I'm definitely gonna have to do a bit of touch up, I think. The molds are off. Yep. I think they look awesome. What do you think? I think they are looking really good too, but I think also I'm gonna try to do a little bit more finish work. There's a little bit of pitting on top, but we've got some filler that we can put in there that's gonna match the white. Um, and we may even do some sanding, but we're gonna, we're gonna do some tests on the sanding first. I think. Because the, the sanding changes the color just a little bit, right? Yeah, it, so there's, as concrete has, there's some sand within the concrete when you sand it. With sandpaper, it reveals the sand. I just said sand a lot. So after that, we have to take out these little plugs, drop in the outlets, get those finished and shimmed and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have to wait several days, right? Yep, at least five. Okay, before sealing. And then after sealing, they're done? Yep, just gotta let the sealant dry and then we have countertop. Excellent. I went home for the weekend and did not sand the countertops, but Anthony stayed at his house and sanded a lot of countertops. I did. I spent a lot of time sanding over the weekend. And they look was, great. Thank you. I am very excited with uh, the way they're starting to look, um, cool. which is good because we're just about ready to start putting sealer on them. I'm going to hold off on the island because this was a pretty big undertaking um, for somebody who's never even done anything with concrete before. So I want to spend some more time kind of working out the variation on this. Concrete Countertop Solutions has some product I can, I can put on here to help basically flood coat it and level it out, get the color all uniform and looking really nice. Awesome. So yeah. this thing's going to take a little bit more work, mm -hmm. but all of the other sections are pretty much done and ready mm -hmm. for sealing, right? Yep. All right, let's start that. It's time to put the sealer on and it's this two part mixture that came with the kit. We're using a satin finish and uh, basically we're just going to put it on with a little furniture roller after we mix it up and that's it. Just a couple coats and we'll be done. These concrete countertops are finished and I think they look awesome, but it really matters what you think. I think they look awesome too. I mean, as we mentioned, there's a little bit more work to do over there on the island, but just looking at it is making me very, very excited. Uh, the system from Concrete Countertop Solutions made it really easy to make your own countertops, which is crazy to think about, and it was affordable. In comparison, I had quartz put in my kitchen and it took <laughs> way longer 
was way more expensive and I didn't really do it myself, somebody else had to do it. So this is a really great system for that. Obviously you have a lot more work to do in here. You've got backsplash, you've got more cabinets to build and doors to build and stuff like that. But are you feeling good about the kitchen? Oh, absolutely. The light at the end of the tunnel is visible and I'm very excited to see this kitchen done. Awesome. We'll be posting some more of his progress on our socials, so be sure to check all those out, subscribe to all those things. If you want to see some more kitchen videos, maybe how I did my kitchen differently, we'll put a link to those at the end of this video. And I think that's it. So big thanks to you for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time. Today we are here at Anthony's house in his- Hold on, I did not know that was go. Concrete countertop. Counter, counter tap. It was like word barf. You should definitely go full speed with it facing up. Like this? Uh, that comes from Concrete Counter Top Test Solutions. <laughs> Why is the office your problem? <laughs> <laughs>